Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. Today I'm going to be trying out a two component acrylic polymer by Resin Pro. It's called Nature Resin and when it arrived I could not wait to try it out and see if it measured up to Jesmini AC100. And so today you're going to be seeing me use Nature Resin with my brand new lidded pot mould to create three bright and colourful candle vessels and we'll see if Nature Resin gets the thumbs up from me. <laughs> Okay, let's get mixing. Now, before we begin, <laughs> let me just say, I'm going to call this nature resin. I don't know how you're supposed to say it. So I've decided on nature resin. It may be wrong, but who knows? It doesn't matter, does it? What I've got here is my digital scales and a large um, mixing vessel, which is silicon, so it's nice and easy to clean. And I'm pouring in 15 grams of the liquid. Now, the ratio for mixing this is one part liquid to 2.5 parts powder. So it's just the same as with jesmonite. So I've measured the 15 grams of liquid and then I'm going to add, well, it should be 37 and a half grams of the powder, but I did 38. Now, me being me, I read the instructions after <laughs> I'd mixed all of this up and apparently you're supposed to um, weigh out your powder before you add it to the liquid and add it a little bit at a time mixing constantly so I've kind of done it wrong but it works well for me doing it this way anyway so I used a spoon adding just a little bit at a time that way I could be nice and precise and the um, good thing about that mixing jug is that the shape of it, when I'm mixing, I can kind of squash the um, powder against the side of the vessel and, uh, you know, any lumps that are in there can be kind of smoothed really easily against the side with the stirring stick. And it worked really well for me because the problem you can get is it can be lumpy and you can use like whisks and all sorts of different fancy mixing tools for it. But I've only got a small amount here and I didn't have a small enough um, kind of whisk thing to stir it with. So I was just using my st silicon st um, stirring stick and I found that just like I said, Pressing it against the side is really good. It works really well. And there's not so much of a rush when you're mixing this as there is with jesmonite. It's got a working time of 12 to 15 minutes. So you can really give it a good stir and not worry too much about it starting to set up before you're ready. I had already done a couple of practices with this before making the video. So when you saw that tub of powder was only partly full, don't worry, if you purchase any of this, that tub will be full. So Nature Resin is non-toxic, eco-friendly and vegan-friendly, VOC-free, and it's a mineral-based product, and so you can mix it without using gloves. I've got my gloves on because of the pigments that I'm going to be using and I didn't want to get it on my skin because it can be hard to wash off. I've kept this part of the video in real time so you can get a true idea of how long I spent mixing to make sure it was nice and smooth and free of lumps. So now it's time to add the pigments and there, you've got a choice with the pigments. You can use acrylic paints, uh, mica powders, all kinds of things to be honest with you but I do find that jesmonite pigments work best and these are just some pigments which I got from eBay. I'll leave a link in the description but like I said you can use 
most things to colour it, but you do get a good, strong colour with the jesmonite pigments. And I was going for strong colours in today's projects. So as you can see, I've used the blue and I'm giving it a good mix again. And I kind of wished afterwards that I'd used a little bit more of the blue pigment because the second pot which I made had more blue pigment added and it did look a lot better. But you learn as you go along, don't you? Anyway, the pots that um, I'm making, I'm using a mould from Devon... Um, I nearly called it Devon Dotting, but I think the actual company is called Devon Moulds. And oh my goodness, <laughs> I'm so impressed with those moulds. They are such good quality. They were an absolute joy to work with. So I'm definitely going to be buying some more moulds from Devon Moulds. In fact, I've already got one ordered. I've ordered a sphere for another project I've got coming up. So I'm just... Uh, this is the lid for the pot and I'm just pouring a tiny bit just to fill the handle for the top of the lid. And then I'm going to pour the rest into the base part of the mould. Once it was poured and I had wiped away that little bit that um, I messed up with, as you can see, <laughs> I just gave it a bang on the table. I kind of lift them up and just gently drop them to the table and that just encourages any air bubbles to rise to the top so that you don't get air bubbles in the surface of your finished piece. Right now for the pot. Now I wanted my finished piece to be a two-tone one. I wanted a nice cl clean crisp line between the blue and the next layer and so I'm Adding the um, nature resin really slowly and I'm letting it find its own way down because I, if you pour, pour it all in at once, it's going to touch places on the mould that you don't want it to touch. You need to allow it time to gently go down to the bottom and not touch the sides just to go down that middle, you know, the middle bit. Um, it's hard to describe. I think you'll probably know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, so just do it really slowly and let it find its own way and you should get a nice clean line. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is speed up the rest because I think that's enough of real-time filming. <laughs> I, I always get worried that you're going to get bored if I keep it in real-time. So I'm going to speed it up and just slow it down in the important bits. So for the white layer, it was exactly the same process again, except this time I used 20 grams of liquid and 50 grams of powder. And I used some white pigment just to brighten up the white of the nature resin. You could use it without the white. It just makes it a bit more of a crisper white if you add some white pigment. And with both of the pigments, I added about three drops. Once the white was mixed, I just poured it in just in the same way as before and gave it a gentle bang against the table and then left it for 40 minutes before demoulding. One of the reasons why I loved this mould so much was because you don't have to turn the whole thing inside out to get the pot out like you do with some of the cheaper moulds. These handmade moulds are just so amazing and I think this is probably the first time I've purchased the handmade ones and honestly it's worth paying that little bit extra because honestly the quality is just, it makes such a difference, it makes it a pleasure to work with moulds because you know that nothing's going to get stuck and it's all going to come out really easily and also that lid fits perfectly into the pot so they're just so well made everything fits together nicely and nothing's distorted it's just perfect and so there's my first pot it's not my favorite of the three like I said earlier, I wished I'd added more blue pigment, but it turned out quite nice. And what I'm going to do is show you all three pots, the demolding part of all the three pots, all in one go. 
And then rather than showing you the process of me making them all, because it's self-explanatory, really, after you've seen one, you don't need to see me do them all. The only difference with the second pot is that it's got three colours. And although it was more work to do three colours, I'm really happy with this one. This one is my favourite. I'm kind of going for the nautical theme with these. That's why I chose the red, white and blue stripes. I thought they would work really well together and make a nice nautical kind of theme. And yeah, the, the three pots did end up going together really nicely. And for the third one, I just stayed with red and white so that I had a blue and white, a red and white and a red, white and blue one. And yeah, they all went together really well. And the good thing is, in a minute, you'll see me sealing them and the colours are going to really be transformed when they're sealed. So do hang on and see what they look like when they've been sealed. So these pots are going to be used inside and they don't actually need to be sealed. But I wanted them to have a slight shine and like I said, I wanted the colours to pop and I knew by adding some wax, the colours would really come to life. And so I'm using the Clark's Cutting Board Wax. Um, as the name suggests, it's designed for wood, for cutting boards, but it actually works really well on this and so I was happy with it. It just gives it a, a slight shine and it makes it feel smoother. And I don't know, it just, as you can see already, before your eyes, I'm sure you can see that the colours are already becoming more vibrant. It really does make a huge difference. As I'm applying the wax, you can probably see that that white stripe in the middle isn't even all the way around. I didn't quite manage to get it completely even and I think it was probably because I didn't level my work surface. But it still looks good and this is still my favourite. And the next step is going to be adding some beeswax and making these into candles. Right, because I'm going to be using my pots as candle vessels, I wanted to use my first attempt, which had gone a bit wrong, as a tester to leave the candle burning for a long time to see if anything would happen to the pot. So I've poured in the beeswax and I, I just let it set and then I lit it and did the test. I've put it into that metal tray because I'm not going to be with it all the time to watch over it just in case anything terrible happened <laughs> I like to be safe and yeah I left it for about four or five hours I think to burn right down and so yeah I've blown out the candle and I'm touching it and nothing happened it didn't burn me <laughs> it wasn't really hot it was warm the pot did feel warm but it was fine. There's no scorching from the candle on the sides. Um, there is a scorch mark, but that's from the flame I used to light it. So next time I would be more careful about what I used to light it with. But the actual candle did not damage the vessel at all. So this is a test that I did just for my own peace of mind. I'm not telling you that this is safe to use with candles. You need to make your own decision. And if you're still not sure, contact the manufacturer. I don't want to be responsible for anything going wrong. But for me, I'm happy that it, it's candle safe. But, you know, that's just my opinion. So once I knew that I was safe to use beeswax in my nature resin candle vessels, I melted some more to 165 degrees. No, it wasn't. It was 160 degrees Fahrenheit and poured it in. Obviously, I put the wicks in there first. I normally use wooden wicks, but I realised that the wicks would be would need to be folded over so that the lids would be able to go on. So I didn't use wooden wicks for these ones. And here we have them all finished. Doesn't that beeswax look really lovely in there? I love that natural beeswax. It's the only wax I use now. And so, yeah, that's all done and I'm really happy with the results. So, does Nature Resin from Resin Pro get the thumbs up from me? 
Absolutely, it does. I loved it. And I loved that extra working time that you get compared to the Jesmonite AC100, which I still love. I, you know, I'm just saying that it's, it's nice to have slightly longer to work with. The only problem is that it's a European company, Resin Pro. Um, yeah, they ship all over Europe, but not to the rest of the world. And I know a lot of my viewers, you're in, um, in the USA, Australia, all over the place, and you can't get your hands on it. And that's really annoying. But what one thing I would definitely recommend to you is Stonecast um, Plaster by Moldmaster. And that is really excellent. And you could get, you would get similar results, but the, um, it doesn't take colour quite as well. The colours will be paler if you use that. And if you can't even get that where you live, do a search for extra strong plaster. And in most countries, you'll be able to find a variation of plaster of Paris, which is much stronger and more like stone. So yeah, you don't have to have this acrylic compound that I've been using to do the same kind of thing. So we've come to the end of the video and I hope it's been useful to you in some kind of way. <laughs> Thank you for watching and don't forget if you haven't already subscribed please do and leave a comment and I will see you again next time. Bye for now.